Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I've had some people ask me to look at Tromjaro, and so let's go ahead and do just that today. All right, so what is Tromjaro? Tromjaro is supposedly a trade-free operating system based on Manjaro. Let's go ahead and have a look at what their website looks like over here. So uh, jumping in over here, this is of course Tromjaro.com. And uh, you can see here it is a trade-free operating system based on Manjaro Linux. And uh, this trade-free goes to the tradefree.org website. So this is basically a uh, purest form of free. The one who offer should ask for nothing in return. The one who receive should not have to give anything in return. So they have, it's more like a, a movement um, Trade free. I'm in generally. I'm inclined to say trade free is probably an okay thing. Uh, I'm not sure it's necessarily going to be the longest best form of thing for the entire world. Uh, if you force it, you know it should uh, be given out of the the cause of the heart. But nevertheless, I do like and support an idea. Of course, trade free does carry with it the heart of what is at Linux. And so this is good. So, you know, why do we need a specific distribution based on trade free? And more importantly, is Tromjaro a true trade free operating system or is it something more? So without getting into the politics one way or the other about trade free, let's go back to their main site and look at what we have. So Simple, flat, and beautiful desktop that's easy for the eyes with multiple flat wallpaper. So basically, it is material design taken to the nth degree, <laughs> for those of you that like it. I even like this description, flat, washed out, custom-made icons. Flat and washed out, that's an interesting... I've never considered flat and washed out to be a positive, but apparently it is. So hey, whatever, you know, that's, that's all right. Um, extremely customizable. I am going to radically disagree that this is extremely customizable. It's based on GNOME, for crying out loud, the least customizable desktop environment in Linux. You want customizable? Give me something I can actually customize. But regardless, uh, that is neither here nor there. I mean, unless you're just talking about wallpapers which is not i mean i guess different menus or whatever we'll have a look at uh at the tweak tools see what we have over there um easy to use and manage uh i did find that it is pretty nice so uh we'll have a look at the tweaks when we get in there of course the settings is just gnome settings add and remove software is just pomac uh, sitting on top of pac-man and i did not actually look at tweaks when i was looking at this it did take me over an hour to get this thing installed and updated. This is going to be a major criticism of the distribution is it is based on Minjaro and the last image that we have from their website is over three months old. You cannot do that on an Arch system. In fact, the reason it took me so long to update is I had to fight around to find a package manager that would not constantly uh, be out of sync and produce errors. So I kept on trying to figure out exactly what's going on. I was about to just say never mind, but then I used the default update uh, sources, which took forever to download things, but at least they updated the system. So whatever that happens to be worth. Now, really what this seems to be more than anything is just a highly modded Firefox. Not really highly modded, just a Firefox with a boatload of uh, tools put onto it. I really didn't see anything else that was interesting or out of the ordinary. They do have a list on their about page of everything that they have changed. And really what we can see is they've changed a lot of uh, themes, mirror lists, a few settings, Pac-Man URL handlers, and that's about it. So... Is it going to be really different than Manjaro? I don't know. Let's go ahead and uh, boot this guy up and see what it happens to look like. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. And I do notice out of the box that it is a very beautifully done system. The For being GNOME, the flat material design, it is very nice and aesthetically pleasing. So if, uh, you know, double go... Regardless of, of what you think of material design, I'm not a huge fan of material design, but it does look pretty nice. 
We're running GNOME 3.34-2 as of right now. I did update the software when we um, when I uh, downloaded and installed this today. Like I said, though, the image is over three months old and in an Arch-based system. Eek! That's old. That's really old. Uh, we don't want to do that. You're asking for troubles. Um, and so with all of this, um, let's go ahead and see what is installed out of the box. Now, everything is sorted into these nice folders here. So that is either going to be good or bad, depending on what you think of these folder organizations. It is fairly minimalistic. Uh, there are not a ton of applications installed. We have backups, archive manager, calendars, just your, your basic stuff. Uh, inside of graphics, uh, we have Libre Draw. Is it uh, Ciano, Keanu, whatever that happens to be? Keanu Reeves? What? No, not that. Flame Shot. Uh, Internet, we have our Firefox, we have Sync Thing, a web torn application, uh, some server access. We have the full Libre Office suite here, uh, including the databasing. We have Electron, Libre Math, uh, Basic Sound. So we have MPV Media Player and SM Player. So you have those two there to deal with your multimedia and your basic system tools. Not a lot else uh, out there than that. So again, we do have POMOC. It does notify us if the system uh, needs updated or whatever else. So uh, you actually can access everything over there. And uh, when you're opening things up, of course, it is uh, having the Mac-like function where everything is up here in the bar. I am not a huge fan of that personally, but uh, hey, I'm not going to criticize it for that. That's kind of more of a uh, uh, just kind of more of a uh, a preference than anything else. Let's go ahead and uh, let's have a look at our preferences over here. Enter my super secret password. That's definitely not one two three. And let's see what we got. So automatically download updates. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here's check available disk space. Remove requir unneeded requirements. There's official repositories. This is where I think trying to change the mirrors around was giving some problems earlier. Uh, Arch user repository is enabled by default. Uh, so whether or not you think that's a good or a bad thing, just be aware of it. There's some cache there. So really not a lot of surprises there. Let's go ahead and have a look at our desktop here. So we have a variety of different wallpapers. Let's go ahead and set as the background here to see what we got. So pretty nice. I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's some desktop wallpapers that are pretty much going for any color palette. Again, all flat material design. Um, not my necessary cup of tea, but uh, I understand that a lot of people do like it. So I'm not going to give it a lot of anything based on that. That's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and keep that one for the duration of our video here. We have our basic settings. Again, we've already looked at this. This is just your basic GNOME settings. Nothing is out of the ordinary there. Terminal. POMOC. The only tool I've not looked at yet is the tweak tool. So let's go ahead and see if there's anything in the tweak tool that is out of the ordinary here. So we can do animations. Here's your appearance. So we have a variety. I don't know what's going on. What's going on, sir? What's going on? Look at all that. I have no idea what's going on with that. It's like it's doing weird stuff. Anyway, like I can't pull these down. Um, I think what's happening is there's an error and I'm going hovering over these and it's not. So like basically I can't change these. Uh, I'm not sure why that might be. Let's size of it maybe. Hey, there we are. All right, maybe it's just need to change the size. I have just a variety of different colors and things in here. So uh, VMix Dark Burial, let's go with Dark Ruby, so just a lot of different highlight colors here, so, ooh, that's, uh, the the dark is definitely better, the dark is definitely better. There we go, let's go with this, that kind of matches our, our theming here a little bit. So we have uh, cursors, the cursors are pretty nice, um, variety of different icon themes, uh, the extensions, you can see we have a lot of extensions here, uh, just user themes, unite, tweaks, and system menus. 
startup applications, see the top bar. We just have our basic top bar with the ability to do things. Here's our title bars. Of course, um, we can enable maximize in our title bars there if we want to. That's not set up by default. So overall, do we have this highly customizable system? Pfft, absolutely not. It's GNOME for crying out loud. GNOME is not customizable without a ton of third-party extensions. And uh, I don't see anything compelling here that gives me the ability to manage all of the menus or things like that. So we basically just have a Manjaro GNOME with really nice theming, which honestly, just looking at the original default, the, their package list that they gave us, that's kind of what we expected. We didn't see anything in there except a lot of themes. Uh, and yeah, there was the, there would have been the option there to add the menu drop down at the top, but you know, that's nothing there. I think that the only real standout thing is that Firefox is just loaded down with a lot of extensions. So here's our Firefox build. And looking at this, we do have DuckDuckGo is set as our default. So that's good. We have our GNOME extensions uh, already set up and pre-configured there. Uh, this is really our list of extensions. So this is pretty much the only thing that makes the system it. But it does have a lot of things. Now, talking about free trade, the auto sci-hub just allows you to grab scientific articles without modifying URLs. Uh, there are things like um, uh, video downloaders. So if you want to go on to YouTube and download a video, you have the plugin automatically installed. We have links to the Wayback Machine, which is going to give us the ability to view a website, even if it's offline, based on the last known version that's good. And then we have HTTPS Everywhere, Privacy Badger, uBlock Origin. So it does do a lot of those types of things. Now, they say in there that uh, there's geolocation type stuff disabled. I don't know if that's the case or not. Let's go ahead and have a look at our Firefox config. Let's go with uh, geolocation, browser geolocation, uh, okay, geo URL, geo enabled is true. So they've not actually disabled the geolocation. You have to toggle that to false to turn off geolocations. So I did see that somewhere on their website. So ultimately, looking at the distribution, um, does it meet its need for free trade Linux? Well, I mean... I don't see it really meeting the need any more than any other Linux. They pretty much all their free trade means is we've taken Firefox and we put a few extensions onto it. Um, it's just a themed Manjaro. So pretty much I don't really see the reason why I would go with this over Manjaro unless I really like the theming of this, which I have to admit, even for me not liking material design, it is a very nice, attractive system. So a uh, very good job on on how how the system works. Uh, based on Manjaro, though, you do need to do an update or a refresh of the system a little bit more frequently than every three or four months because I downloaded this thing, got it installed, and it wanted you know gigabytes. I think it was like four gigs of downloads, but half the package mirrors it was suggesting were broken. And so I think that that there's a little bit of work to do. Uh, do they meet this free trade? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't see it to be any more significant than any other Linux distribution. Pomac has all the same software. Everything is there. Of course, they do say that, uh, you know, we build a minimalist system. Let me actually go back to that web page there. That's worth saying. Um, they do say that they, they go back to a minimalist system and let you install the apps that you want. So that's on the about page. Let's head on over to the about page there. And it says it's a minimalist system. Let people use our apps section to install whatever they wish. Um, your app section just basically brings us to this page here. There's some recommended apps, which seem to change every single time I load this page. So meaning I think that uh, they're just grabbing random apps here. Let's go ahead and click on Thunderbird. Let's see if there's some automation install script. It looks like there very well may be here. So let's go ahead and do this. So basically you can go to their web page and install stuff with a click script on their page, uh, which I could have very easily just installed this from Pomoc instead. So I guess maybe the, the difference here is that 
here I can see which applications are free and open source, but it's Linux. Nearly everything is going to be free and open source. Let's in the AUR, but they've enabled the AUR, so I don't see why it's a big deal. Uh, so, uh, and to me, this is just a skinned Manjaro, and... Would I recommend it? Uh, it's I'm going to put it in that list of it's just another distro. Uh, it's themed Manjaro, which means it's a child of a child. You know, Manjaro is a child of Arch. Uh, Tromjaro is a child of Manjaro. It's basically Manjaro with some extra themes. If you like the theming, I don't think you're going to have a bad experience. Uh, if you're going to be doing anything different with the theming, just download Manjaro. It's going to accomplish the same thing for you. That's my thought of Tronjaro. Am I completely missing something? Let me know how wrong I am in the comments down below. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.